We know how many men have lost their lives because of a whorish woman. We know how many men have lost half of their wealth because they married the wrong woman. Even though she didn't work at all to gain any of this thing, just because of the divorce, she gets half of his stuff. Okay. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath again. We are looking at chapter 6 of Proverbs. And we looked at the first part, which is warning against foolishness. Now we are going to look at warning against adultery. Let's get into it. So, my son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. We've already looked at something like that before in chapter 3 or chapter 2. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them upon thy, about thy neck. Well, basically means, upon thine heart means, you know, inward. Upon thy neck means, show it to other, the other people. So, how would I say it to you on that part? Remember that we just read, we just saw that out of the, from the abundance, out of the, out of the abundance, abound, abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So when you keep it in, within thine heart, you're not going to be speaking foul languages. You're not going to have a forward mouth. You're not going to have a, um, a wicked heart because God, God's judgment are going to be just and good, which means you're going to practice the um, benevolence, patience, love, forgiveness, and um, temperance, things like that. And again, and as you do that, it will show to the other people as well. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. So basically, at, at the time that you are living that kind of life where you actually have God's commitment in your heart and in your mind, it will show your actions will be different than the rest of the people who do not actually um, I would say who do not actually uh, live according to God's principle. What does that mean? That means um as much as you live according to God's principle, you will become different. You will have a different mindset. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot learn from other people and their experiences, but the words that will come out of your mouth will not be, I would say, disrespectful. You might use the strongest word, but it doesn't mean it's going to be disrespectful. So, that is something we need to keep in mind. Number first, number twenty-three. For the commandments, for the commandments is a lamp, and a law, and the law is a light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. I know if you guys know already in Psalms one nineteen verse one hundred five, your word is a lamp into my feet, and a light onto my path. I had to, I had to put it in English, because in French it says. Tapawal is in the lamp à mes pieds, which is your word is a lamp unto my feet, et une lumière sur mon sentier, and the light unto my path. So, in the same way, God's commandment is the lamp. God's commandment is the lamp. That's what shows you when you did what is wrong to go back to God and look for, for repentance. The commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, they are not there to remove the sin from you. They are there as a lamp to show you where you did, where where is something wrong. The same way, the light, the law, which is the Ten Commandments, is a light. It shows you what is wrong, and the reproofs of instructions are way of life. Meaning, as you live for, as you move forward and live or get older, you will become more um, mindful of what's going on. Some reproofs might be might 
actually reproofs usually they should be to help you become better but sometimes some people they reprove with a way that makes you look even worse than before so that we need to be actually careful on how we do the reproof of the people to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman and again we're talking about adultery okay so the woman is not an actual woman now it can also be a woman but remember the book of proverbs is parable means proverb means parable so to keep thee from evil women from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman lust not after her beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee with her eyelids okay so at the same time it is speaking about a true a actual woman we can also take it in a different method adultery as i mentioned previously in one of the chapters where we talk about immorality which is a feminine gender adultery is also a feminine gender in french the word adultery means adultère adultère is a feminine gender which means the evil woman in this sense is adultère or is adultery so adultery might look nice might look good people think of sometimes it's like when you look at something that somebody else is somebody else has it looks better if you never heard that before it is true maybe we actually they look at somebody else's wife they're like man i wish i had that wife that happens a lot so do not fall into that trap of adultery because adultery always looks good on the outside until you go and commit the act you could lose your life get disease get arrested um, many bad things can happen so at the end it doesn't look as good as it looked when you looked at it from afar it is the same way here do not lust after her beauty in thy heart yeah don't even if it's actually an actual woman don't look at her beauty and be like oh, wow she's beautiful i want to marry her one day like no there is more to beauty yes there's more than to beauty i'm not saying don't don't um, look for an ugly woman I, i never said that but don't just look at the beauty and then go off of that if she is an uh, eight and she has a nasty attitude then go for the six who has a great attitude yeah and her eyelid well, we have an issue now with the women um, buying eyelashes and i'm not gonna get into that for by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life <sighs> I don't even think I need to explain that part. We know how many men have lost their lives because of a whorish woman. We know how many men have lost half of their wealth because they married the wrong woman. Even though she didn't work at all to gain any of this thing, just because of the divorce, she gets half of his stuff. Okay, let's move on. Verse 27. Verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon the hot coals and his feet not be burned? In a sense, yes, that can happen. Look at the book of Daniel. Now, that only happened because God was with them as well. But this but in real life no you cannot only supernatural ways can actually do that people can walk on fire and not get burnt they can be possessed by demons or possessed by god either one of them will help you in that part but without it you get burned because you are actually um oh when it comes to the to spirit only god can burn spirit but you can be burned by cold Coals is not going to burn the spirit because spirit can go through anything. 
So, in a sense, no. You cannot walk on a, on a fire and end up burned on that part. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, oh man, whosoever touches, touches, touches her shall not be innocent. Like I said earlier, even it could be actually an actual woman, it can also be um, the woman called adultery. And, but in this sense, we are speaking about an actual woman, the neighbor's wife. I mentioned earlier that when you go and look at somebody else's wife, it appears much better. But at the end of the day, you regret because you can get killed. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, he shall give all the substance of this of his house. So sometimes when God says do not despise a thief, because if he steals self to satisfy his soul, it doesn't mean that what the person did is right. But if the person is stealing food from you it's because he is hungry, let them have it. Let them have it. Now, if the person is caught, then justice shall be served. But if somebody steals your food, then don't don't make a big deal out of it. If somebody steals your car, don't make a big deal out of it either. Just report it to the police and then go in life. But if, you, if that person gets caught, they could be dead. If as they are still in your car and you catch them, you could shoot them. You could kill them at the same time, which is lawful. But if you didn't catch them, just, you know, do what is necessary, do what is right. Go call the police and let them handle it. Verse number 32. But whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he doeth it. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. So when you commit adultery, you're basically killing your own self. Yes. A wound and dishonor shall he get, but his reproach shall not be wiped away. You, there is a, there is a saying in my language that goes like this. By coublier, poté max songer, meaning um, giving somebody a blow like a punch, it might it might be forgotten, but the scar will never be wiped out or forgotten. So, a wound and dishonor shall he get. So, he that does that kind of stuff, who will sleep with somebody else's wife. He might get beaten. He might get killed. He might get something bad happen. That 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 hurtful part will go away. But the mental issue, the mental aspect, the the reproach that has befallen on that person and that woman, it will never be wiped away because they will always remember that wicked thing that they actually did. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. I mentioned that earlier. When it comes to oops, when it comes to um, adultery, you can lose your life on that part. So even though it might look good, oh man, that guy's wife is sexy and she is fine. I just want to smash. No, don't do it. Because if you get caught, you know, women don't understand nothing about men. The one thing men don't don't like that women do is being disloyal. We want you to be exclusive to us when it comes to your sexual part. Just how we are. Where you see a man can cheat on a woman and she forgives him, if a man if a woman cheats on the man, he might never forgive her at all. As a matter of fact, he might even want to kill her too if he finds them both. He might want to kill them both, including her. That's just something that is ingrained in men. Um, so it's just what it is. 
Why did we, why we like that? I can't explain to you, but we know for sure that's how men are in the most cases. The last verse, verse number 35, he will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. So lady, ladies, listen up. It doesn't matter how much, how many gifts, how many good things you do for that man from that point on. He will never forget what you did to him when it comes to giving the vagina to another man. Ever. Ever. So men, at the same time, be aware and run away from the woman called adultery. Because your life, if you get caught, might not be spared either. Anyways, it was the Open Bird TV. Food for thought.